I'm going to show you how to overhaul the pedal on a vintage Schwinn bike. This is kind of not moving super smoothly in there. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off, clean it up, and overhaul and replace all the bearings in there. First, I've got to take this thing off. Uh, this is the left pedal, so this is going to be left hand threaded. Um, so to loosen it, I've got to turn it clockwise. The right hand pedal is going to be right hand threaded, so on that you turn it the normal way to loosen it counterclockwise. But this being the left pedal, i got to turn it clockwise. Um, I have a 15 millimeter uh, pedal wrench here, and so that's going to fit onto here, like that. And then go ahead, there. Once you get it broken loose, it generally come off a lot easier. Still pretty tight. Probably hasn't been taken off for years. If I were. And there. Okay, I've got the pedal here, and the first thing I want to do is uh, remove. Uh, the toe clip here and there's two little screws holding that on and I don't have a wrench to fit these I think they're nine millimeter or something standard but I don't have a wrench small that fits those so I'm going to use vice grips to clip on the little nut on the back and just use a regular flat tip screwdriver to go ahead and remove these and there's a nut and a washer on the back side there. And put those aside. And then go ahead and re remove the strap here. And notice how it's twisted down through there. Okay, put that aside. Okay, I want to also go ahead and remove these reflectors. Um, let me see, is this wrench? Yeah, it looks like it's a 5 16 inch uh, wrench that fits these little nuts on there. I mean, th these, to remove ref reflectors, uh, to overhaul this is really not necessary. Um, probably didn't really uh, need to remove the toe clip, but I'm going to go ahead and clean these things up overall, just make them a little bit cleaner and nicer. And the reflector comes off. There's two small nuts there, and then there's a little bracket here on the back. And get the other one off. And there's a little bracket there. Okay, now I want to go ahead and remove this dust cap here. And you just use a screwdriver to kind of pry that off. And there's that. So it's looking a little dirty in there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and spray a little bit of uh, penetrating oil in on this nut here. And just in there in general get all that loosened up in there because of all the rust and we'll go ahead and leave that to soak for a few minutes okay now I'm going to use my uh, 15 millimeter wrench to hold on to the spindle over on this end and I have a half inch socket over on this side so I'm going to go ahead and use that to go ahead and remove this little lock nut there and it looks like it already came loose so I'm going to go ahead and Unscrew this. Nope, it's still kind of tight, so just go ahead. Get that off. And go ahead and put that aside. Okay. Now, underneath that lock nut is a washer um, that's got like a little uh, notch on it so it doesn't turn, and then there's a cone under that. And I can try to get this washer out here. Oh, I got it out. And then I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, cone out. And 
See, I want to be real careful undoing that because I, I want to keep track of how many bearings are under there. Right now I'm doing this inside of a box lid so that if the bearings fall out, they're not going to go all over the place. And there's bearings at the other end and I don't want those to fall out. So I want to keep track of how many bearings are on each side. Let me see here. Make this cone here. Okay. And I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually bearings missing in there because it doesn't, there's like empty space in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bearings in there. I'm guessing there should be nine. So, anyway, so there's eight bearings in there. And go ahead and just pull those out. And put those off to one side here. And then I'm going to go ahead and remove this spindle. And then there's more bearings at the other side there. They're going to fall out here. On that side there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 bearings on that side. So it looks like 8 on one side and 11 on the other, but I'm thinking on the one side there should actually be 9, possibly 9 bearings on the outside. I'm going to go to the bike shop and get some, uh, I'll get some extra bearings and so I'll try 9 over on that side. Okay, I've got my can of uh, paint thinner here, so I'm going to go ahead and just dump the uh, greasy parts into there and get these cleaned up. And let it soak a little bit and get all that, that grease off of those. Okay, and then the bearings seem to be 532nd inch uh, bearings, and they all seem to be the same size. Okay, I got these parts cleaned up uh, pretty well, and then what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, uh, put them into a plastic bottle. There's still some rust on these parts, so I'm going to go ahead and put them all the little nuts and screws and in the plastic bottle. I'm going to pour in a, a little bit of vinegar, apple cider vinegar, into the bottle, and that'll help. get the rust off of these parts. Put them in a, like a plastic water bottle and then just shake it up periodically and in hours or probably less than a day I'll have most of that rust off. Okay, I'm going to start putting this thing back together now. Um, I cleaned this up a little bit more with some steel wool and a little wire brush. I could have uh, even spent more time on it, but it's clean enough for what I want to do. Okay, I got some grease here, just some uh, generic uh, automotive grease. And I'm going to go ahead and put grease in down into the races at both sides here. Okay, there. And I got some brand new bearings here. Now on the uh, inside part, uh, it's got the shallower 
little well and on the outside part it's got the deeper well I believe on the inside part it takes 11 bearings and on the outside part it's going to take nine bearings there are only eight bearings in there but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to have nine so I got some tweezers here and just start laying these in there Okay, so 11 bearings over there. Yep, it looks like the bike shop gave me one wrong bearing. Yeah. And on this side, there's a lower race. The race is down below there, so you got to make sure you get the bearings down there. And some of nine bearings, two, eight, and nine bearings there. And then kind of press them down with your finger, cutting them into place. They should form like a nice circle there. Okay, so now I got the spindle here. The spindle is going to go in uh, from the inside here. There's a, a bigger hole on this side and there's a smaller hole on this side. And so you notice this, this is tapered. So this is going to go in through here. And it comes out there. And I'm gonna kind of hold it down in place here. Then I've got my cone here, and I'm going to go ahead and screw the cone on. And very carefully, I'm going to be put. I'm going to turn the, the the bottom part of the spindle here. Turn this, but be pushing it up, and hold those bearings in place, and then just kind of hold the cone, and so let it screw down into place. You hold it with the screwdriver here. Okay. Okay, so you want to get this adjusted to where it's against the bearings, but not, not binding up at all. And this would be like tricky. You have to play with it a little bit. Okay, now that I got the cone in there, um, I'm going to take this little washer, and it's got like a little uh, little bump in there, and it's going to go ahead and fit onto the end of the spindle. And there's a flat side on the spindle. That little bump there kind of goes down into that place. Hold that in place, and then I've got the little lock nut. So I'm going to go ahead and screw that on. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead, kind of hand tighten that down, feel how these feel. It turns relatively smoothly, there's no play in there. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that down, get my 15 millimeter wrench on there and get my uh, half inch socket over here and tighten that down. Then feel it, oh, it's binding up a little bit, so I wanna loosen that. So I'll loosen this up just a little bit. Then I can use this to kind of Loosen the cone down there just a little bit. Get that. Then tighten the lock nut down again. Okay, now smoothing, moving much more smoothly now. And tighten it down this all the way. Nice and smoothly now. 
Okay. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the dust cap on. Just tap that into place there. Like that. Go ahead and put the reflectors on. There's a little uh, bracket in the back. I think it'll go on either way. And it just fits right in the back there. And then just take the small little nuts and just thread the screw those on by hand. Get them started. Then I'll use my little uh, 5 16 inch wrench to uh, tighten those down. And then put the other one on the same way. Okay, so there's that now. Now I'm going to go ahead and put the toe clip back on. And let me see. It just fits right on there like that. So I'm going to go ahead and put that on kind of where it was there. Or the little rust spots. I'm going to go ahead and just cover that up with that. Um, let me see. Make sure this is the left side. And so yeah, so this is the right way. You don't want to have it on there and have it for the right side, but this is the left side. And so this is going to go on like that. And I put these little uh, screws down through here. Like that. And then there's a washer. And a nut that goes onto the back of those. So I'll get that started on. And get the other like that. Okay, tighten these down. Okay, now I need to install the strap. Now the way that the strap was installed on the bike when I got it, the uh, buckle was over here and the cable came up from the bottom. Now I've seen some where the buckle is coming up from the bottom and the strap comes down from the top. So the strap is facing down. But I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it the way it was on the bike when I got it. So find the end of the, the uh, strap here. So I want the outside, the white part facing up. Pull this through, get the bu buckle roughly in position where I want it. And then I'm going to straighten this out a little bit because there's that twist in there. And then slide this through down here. Because I don't want the, the twist over there. So there's the twist down here. So I'm going to go ahead and let that twist there. Again, I want the white part facing out. So slide it like this. So it's got the twist in there. Then I can go ahead and bring the, the uh, strap up here. And the strap is going to come from underneath there. Come up here. And then I can just slide it right through there. Like that. So now I can just go ahead and mount that on the bike. And that is how you overhaul a clean lube new bearings in a vintage Schwinn uh, pedal. Hope that helps. Thanks.